Lumbar discography is utilized to diagnose if the disc is the source of the pain. In over 20 years, I've done close to a thousand or more lumbar discogram, including the cer cervical, the neck, thoracic, and lumbar all combined. The safety of discography is well proven. There's minimal risk of infection, uh, nerve injury, or any other complication. And I'm very proud to say that in my years of experience, I have not had or encountered any of these complications. That's not to say that all procedures don't have inherent risk, which we always discuss with the patient. So when you perform a discogram, you simply put a needle, you use local anesthetic, you use sedation, the patients are comfortable. It's a very small needle, it's a 22 gauge needle, and that's the size of the needle. The length is not important, it's the thickness of the needle that's important. So when you talk about a gauge, a 22 gauge needle is very thin, it's about maybe about four or five strands of hairs put together. So it's a very thin needle. So that needle is placed very carefully using guidance of fluoroscopy, and some people use CAT scan, but I use fluoroscopy because I can get a real-time picture and using certain imaging of the spine to carefully and safely place this needle into the vertebral disc and then we study the disc to determine if it's the source of your pain, whether it's back pain and or leg pain. And when you do it, you use an on the pig dye and you inject it very carefully and slowly. And the reason why you do it very carefully and slowly because even at very low volume, a half a milliliter of volume, patient can have intense pain because they have a chemically sensitive disc. Some discs require more volume, up to one to two milliliters, and those patients then have back pain because it's a mechanically sensitive disc because the pressure increases and reproduces their pain. A normal disc will have discomfort but not the same pain that they're experiencing. That's why it's called a provocative discography. So once you do that and you diagnose the disc disorder, then the treatment plan comes down to this. In the United States, they're doing what they call disc replacement surgery. And in some patients, it's required because they have an instability or a severe problem that has to be done surgically to take care of. In some cases, the patient have back pain because the disc causing the pain and they really don't have many options. But this is what I'm talking about when I say vertebral augmentation. Because over the years, in European countries, in Italy, Germany, and many other countries, they have done numerous studies in the last 15, 20, 30 years, maybe even 40 years. We have done a lot of research to support that if you inject ozone, that's medical grade oxygen, through a generator, to add another O molecule to make O3, which is ozone. Usually about 95% oxygen, 5% ozone. It could be 97% oxygen, 3% ozone. You can make it at various concentration based upon what you're trying to achieve. So once you can inject this medical grade ozone inside the disc, as well as outside the disc, there are numerous studies that support that this is very beneficial clinically, long-term. Very important word, long-term. So if you look at the journals, you have an international journal of spine surgery, which they tell you it's designed to promote the advancement of spine surgery. Now this is the spine surgery journal talking about injecting ozone using a minimally invasive procedure that's like I showed you using the discography approach by placing a small needle very carefully inside the disc and injecting ozone into the disc to relieve pain because ozone acts as a pain reliever and an anti-inflammatory agent and it works very profoundly to not only relieve the inflammation but it also helps to shrink the disc. So the disc which I mentioned is like a toothpaste type nature has water. So if you, sh if you, if you, if you diminish the water concentration of the disc it shrinks and it causes a reversal of some herniation. That's one article. It's another article which is done and it's the, the title is called Minimally Invasive Oxygen Ozone Therapy for Lumbar Disc Herniation. It's put out by the American Journal of Neuroradiology. These are neuroradiologists who also do a lot of spinal work who actually support 
the fact that you can use oxygen ozone therapy to inject into the disc and it's very important because if you get to the conclusion of this article it states at the conclusion of the article and I'll read it to you <clears throat> our study provides evidence that the combined intradiscal and periganglionic injection of medical ozone and periganglionic injection of steroid has a cumulative effect that enhances the overall outcome of treatment. For this reason, oxygen ozone therapy is an option to treat lumbar disc herniation that has failed to respond to conservative management before recourse to surgery or when surgery is not possible. Now they mentioned periganglionic injection. I mentioned to you before doing the injection of the ozone inside of the disc. The periganglionic injection is something that I have done probably five, six thousand above. I have not even counted, I can't even count how many I've done. There's so many. Where we do a transforaminal epidural injection. It's an epidural injection but she had different ways of doing epidurals. You can go the old fashioned way of in the middle of the back here, which I believe is the most inefficient way at this point, or you can go using what they call the transforaminal approach, where you place the medication very carefully, once again with a very small needle, using anesthetic and sedation to keep the patient comfortable, and you place the medicine, which is a combination of local anesthetic, a type of steroid, there are various types of steroid that you could use. There are at least four different types, if not more, but mainly we use four. We use bethamethasone, we use celest bethamethasone and celestone, we use decadron, we use kenalog, and we also use defmedrol. Most of the safety factors in the literature now comes in using decadron because it's non-particulate and the next step, if you don't get good response, I usually use bethamethasone, which is the second less particulate, meaning that it has less little particles in there to cause problems if it goes into vessels. So basically you do what they call a periganglionic injection. You inject the medication very carefully around the ganglion. It's called the dorsal root ganglion. That's why it's called periganglionic. And you inject the mixture of anesthetic and steroid and you also inject a concentration of ozone, probably about eight milliliters of ozone and as much as 10 at times, where you inject it around. So what you're actually accomplishing, you are injecting and you're treating the disc internally through a very small needle and not having to do anything surgically. And you also inject in the outside of the disc where you have inflammation around the nerve root. So you're getting a win-win situation of treating inside and outside. And so that's what this article talks about. But remember I mentioned to you spinal augmentation because there are instances when patients also have lumbar facet disease causing back pain, which you determine on the examination and also use radiographical findings. And you can use diagnostic facet blocks as well to determine if the facets are source of the back pain. So I also treat the facets with local anesthetic to block the medial branch. And I also, in cases that they're elderly patients that have arthritic joints, that's quite visible, I inject around the joint to be careful not to rupture the capsule. In most cases, there's a lot of degeneration, so there's not much of a capsule anyway. And I also inject some ozone outside because if you believe that the concept that ozone has anti-inflammatory and pain relieving properties, it will work at this level as well. And in my experience, it has worked. So that's what I mentioned when I say spinal augmentation. I'm adding these substances, ozone, anesthetic, and steroid into the spinal region to target these specific areas of pain to get you to heal faster, quicker, and be on your way to recovery. Remember, my goal as a clinician is to treat your condition as quickly as the effectively and as safely as possible to get you up and running again so you can enjoy life, increase your functionality, and your quality of life improves as well.